world of youtube what is up jay hutch and i'm coming at you with a tutorial today pretty much a commentary quality microphone tutorial whatever the hell you want to call it uh, i've had a few requests uh, from some people to do one of these and i figured you know why not i needed a video idea today i didn't really want to do much gaming today so this is this is pretty cool i will say you know this is just my way of doing it it, it all depends on your voice. It depends on your room. It depends on how much background noise you have. It depends, you know, because I have the same voice, right, all the time. And I'm in the same room when I record. But somehow, you know, each time I record a vocal, it's just a little bit different. You got to change things a little bit sometimes. But this is the base way, you know, this is the base of everything. You know, if you have to change some things, you know, you'll have to figure that out on your own for your setup but this is the way i'm doing it what i'm going to do is is play your vocal or play your vocal play this vocal right here uh as you do see the level is going up and down because i am recording on a another program but the level's going up and down and that's you know that's kind of a thing too that's about where you want your level right there you know when you're talking you want it pretty high and how this vocal looks you know this black part that's called the wave that's about what you want it to look like. You don't want no peaks, you know, hitting the top and bottom and everything. But I'm going to play this for you with no effect on it. That way you can hear what we're working with. World of YouTube, what is up? Jay Hutch, and we are playing blah, blah, blah at blah, say, blah. Obviously, you see it on the screen, blah, blah, blah. And yes, we are doing it. Test over. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what we got. That, that was no effects, nothing. Um, with the program I'm using, it's Mixcraft Pro Studio 7. Um, all the uh, effects I'm using are free effects, uh, except Isotope right here. Isotope Ozone 5 is actually a mastering suite for, uh, you know, you don't really need it for commentaries. I make music, so, you know, that's why I have it. But the first effect is a uh, pretty much a noise gate. This is how I have it set up. I will try to leave a link down in the description and honestly, this is the best free one I have ever found, and I still use it to this day. Um, let's play this vocal with, uh, without this, or with this, I mean, real quick. World of you. Now, you can hear it right there at the beginning. Right at the beginning. You, you see where there's that little space right here? You know, the silence? Wor you hear nothing. You hear nothing. Now, without it, world. I know it's not much, but you know, world, world, you can still hear it. So what this does is take away that static, that background noise, you know, your fans in the background, whatever you got going on. Um, and I will say this all also depends on your mic too, guys. You know, you can't, you can't really buy a dollar store mic for 15 bucks and expect to make it sound like this. I do have the blue spark, uh, XLR condenser mic. I'm pretty sure I'm not trying to like just throw names out there for views or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one PewDiePie uses. Um, but yeah, there's that effect. I have my compressor on there. Now, a compressor, I don't know if you guys know about compression, but basically what compression does is uh, makes the vocal even. You know, like if I'm way back here talking, you know, it sounds lower than when I'm way up here. And what compression does is help, you know, even all that out and raise the volume of your vocal without you having to normalize or add certain artifacts, you know, by normalizing to your vocal, which can sound pretty terrible on low quality mics. So this is how I have it set up. You know, the threshold is the volume. It's, it's kind of hard to explain because honestly, I don't know exactly what it is. You know, I just do this stuff. I was I self-taught myself my whole life. But the threshold is basically at the volume you want the compression to start. And it's not the high volume, it's the lower volume. So like say, you know, like when I go back here and you can't hear me as well and it's not as high. Um, the compression will start on those lower parts. Like if, if a part of your vocal is minus six decibels and you set your threshold at minus seven decibels. Um, it will compress up those minus sixes and, it, you know, it'll start to sound smoother. Uh, the ratio is how much compression, basically. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to explain this a little simple for you guys, you know, because I don't know who knows what here and stuff. 
but the ratio is basically how much compression. As you can see here, this one doesn't really show it, but usually a ratio would be like two, one, one, you know, that would be like a decent ratio. Uh, the input is how much, you know, your input sound right here is going through. I have my input down at zero and I have the gain up, which the gain is the output. So the vocals entering through the compressor um, and coming out with a new sound. So I have no input up at all, which means none of the original sound is being played. Um, attack, you always want it all the way down. You know, attack is like as soon as it starts, like when your vocal starts, um, as soon as it starts, the compression starts. If I were to turn my attack up, you know, to say like 53, it would take like a second after your vocal starts for the compression to start, which you don't want. In release, you always want at a, sl uh, a fast time. So I have mine on this compressor anyway. Like I said, guys, it all depends on what you have, but you can pretty much transfer these techniques over to whatever you have. The release is on this at 184, and I'm pretty sure that means milliseconds. Uh, 184 is pretty good. Sometimes, you know, you might have to change them up a little bit or whatever. The knee is kind of like the ratio. Um, it kind of dictates how much compression there will be. I have mine for my mic, my setup. I have it set up at a six, you know, with this compressor. And it's really nice. It, it gives me a great sound uh, I just love it and a limiter limits the output so when you're limiting the output you know you'll get a little bit of a lower volume but it it tends to give a smoother sound overall more even you know everything like that that's why they use uh limiters and everything while they're mastering music um once they're finished with the song uh, next up though, I know I didn't really explain the compression good guys, but you know, you can look at my settings right here and maybe transfer them over to your compressor. Um, uh, next up we have an equalizer. Now the equalizer is one of the biggest things about the quality I have. Uh, this equalizer is a parametric EQ. Um, <clears throat> I do have it set on analog. Analog is like, you know, real sound. Digital is, you don't want digital. You just don't want digital. Use analog if possible. Um, this EQ is great. Uh, let me play this vocal for you guys with just these three effects on here real quick. World of YouTube, what is up? Jay Hutch, and we are playing blah, blah, blah at blah, say blah. Obviously, you see it on the screen, blah, blah, blah. And yes, we are doing it. Test over. Now, that sounds much better than no effects at all. Um, a big part of it though is this EQ, I'm telling you. Uh, I also have another EQ up here and I can't really tell you guys how to EQ. You know, this is a little hint I can give you real quick, is, is like you probably would be working with an EQ like this. Now what you can do is, is raise this all the way up here. Hold on. Earl W. Raise one of these all the way YouTube. up. YouTube, what is up, J Hutch? Oh, it ain't, it ain't active. It ain't active. So we are playing blah, blah, blah at blah. Say. Now you hear that? You hear how it got really bassy and muddy sounding. Now you want to, you can do that with each frequency. You want to be able to um, hear which ones when they're raised sound annoying. So basically if you raise a frequency and it sounds really annoying, you know, you want to lower that one a little bit. You, that's just what you want to do. And Finally, a de-esser. It is called Sybil, a box. This, this did cost money too, though. Um, this vocal pack did cost money. Antares makes, uh, they make auto-tune. So, yeah. So this is a pretty good one. Uh, uh, de-esser basically gets rid of the s and sh in your voice, you know? So it's not like super s or super sh, you know? It, it basically smooths out those s's. So I have mine set, the frequency is set on 3010, threshold at 24, uh, the compression on it, like there you see a little bit of that compression I was talking about, the ratio. Uh, it is a 211 for the de -esser. Attack time is always at the fastest, you know, so as soon as that hits, you know, it starts the effect. And uh, release time, I have it at a 20, you know, for this 20 milliseconds, I believe. And it works out perfectly for me. So with all this on here, what does this sound like? 
world of youtube what is up jay hutch and we are playing blah 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 at blah say blah obviously you see it on the screen blah 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 and yes we are doing it so that's that and here it is with no effects again world of youtube what is up jay hutch and we are playing blah 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 at blah effects. say blah obviously you see it on the no screen effects. blah 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 and yes we are doing it so, you know, I, I know it's not a real good tutorial, guys. You know, I'm not a good explainer or teacher. I, I self-taught myself all this shit. I never, <clears throat> I never like went to school for it or anything. I never learned like the technical aspects of the stuff. I just know what it does. You know, when I go to mess with something, I just know what it does. So that's how I do it. I mean, you can take some of these techniques. You can transfer them over, you know, to whatever you record on. A lot of people use audacity, so the techniques might be a little different, but you know, you can basically still use them in the same way. Uh, but that's just how I do it, guys. You know, it, like I said, it all depends on your voice, your environment, you know, everything. So, you know, that's that. I would say to definitely uh, try this out, though. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not like a professional fucking explainer guy. Uh, it was never really my department to be a professional explainer guy. But I figured I'd make this video for you guys. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, one more thing about the EQ. Um, most of the time in a setting like you would be doing commentaries, this area right here where this four is, you see, that area right there is usually the worst. Especially if you have kind of a deeper voice like I do. This is usually the worst. Like if I raise this and play this. World of YouTube. What is up? Jay Hutch. Even right there playing it doesn't sound blah, as good. blah, blah. You know, you want to lower this down. World of YouTube. What and is you hear, up? Jay Hutch. And we are playing. Blah. You hear how it kind of like, uh, I don't know, pulls that bass end of the vocal together. Uh, maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe I don't. Maybe it doesn't sound good. I don't fucking know. But this is the way I do it. So let me know what you guys think. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. But I'm out of here, guys. If you like this video, like, sub, comment, and share. And if you'd like me to do some more tutorials on this kind of stuff, then I will. Uh, I'm sure if I were to do some more, I would get better at explaining how to do the stuff and everything. But I figured this would help quite a few of you out. So I'm out of here, guys. Peace.